Hey, Gleek.io fans. UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. UML is now at version 2.5 and allows for 14 different types of diagrams. In this video, we'll give you a summary and an example of each UML diagram type. Structure diagrams include the following. Composite structure diagram, profile diagram, object diagram, class diagram, package diagram, deployment diagram, and component diagram. Under the behavior category, we find these diagrams. State machine diagram, communication diagram, use case diagram, activity diagram, timing diagram, interaction overview diagram, and sequence diagram. Let's kick off with class diagrams. Software engineers use class diagrams to show the classes, attributes, and methods involved in a system and to describe their relationships to each other. Class diagrams let developers sketch a static view of a system before they go on to create it. Another more concrete form of structure diagram is the object diagram. Object diagrams focus on representing a system at a particular point in time. An object diagram shows the real-world instances of classes and the relationships between these instances. Next up are component diagrams. In any software system, the various components can be composed of other, smaller components. A component diagram shows how these individual software components interact and the dependencies between them. Moving on in our list, we get to deployment diagrams. Deployment diagrams don't deal with abstract elements in a system. Instead, a deployment diagram models the physical deployment of the components, or nodes, in that system. It is concerned with real-world entities such as servers and computing resources, and with the interaction between them as described in terms of connectivity and APIs. Next, let's look at package diagrams. Packages in UML are hierarchical groupings of elements that allow for the manageable organization of the various components in a system. For instance, packages can enable a developer to represent the different layers of code used in the system and show how these different layers interact. And now, we're on to the composite structure diagram. Composite structure diagrams are concerned with the internal structure of a class or classifier and how its internal parts collaborate via particular ports at runtime to achieve their desired purpose. The last of the UML structure diagrams is the profile diagram. Profile diagrams enable the extension of a UML model with stereotypes. These stereotypes can be assigned to individual UML elements or connectors and used when modeling particular domains. With the sequence diagram, we are now moving on to the first of the behavior diagrams. Sequence diagrams are based on the modeling of interactions between objects in a particular time sequence. They provide an overview of how the different parts of a system interact over time and how processes are carried out. Use case diagrams are a simple type of behavior diagram. Use case diagrams just show how a user can interact with the system. They depict actors and the actions that they can take to have an impact on the system. Let's move on to activity diagrams. Activity diagrams graphically show the workflows of activities and actions. These types of diagrams are concerned with the flow of control in a system and how decisions and conditions can lead to branching in the system. The state machine diagram is next in the list of behavior diagrams. State machine diagrams are designed to capture the dynamic nature of a system and how it can change from one state to another. These diagrams show possible states and transitions, along with the actions or events that cause the system to change states. Now, let's look at communication diagrams. A communication diagram is similar to a sequence diagram as it shows the dynamic interactions between objects over time. But a communication diagram gives more of an overview of the entire system with less focus on timing. 
And with the interaction overview diagram, we're nearly at the last behavior diagram. Just one more to go after this. Interaction overview diagrams are concerned with the holistic view of a system. These diagrams are similar to the activity diagram because interaction overview diagrams visualize the sequence of activities and flow of control. But they allow for frames around activities that enable complex inline interactions to be described. The timing diagram brings us to the end of our journey through UML diagram types. Timing diagrams are a bit like sequence diagrams because they show the behavior of objects in the system over time. But the timing diagram uses a linear time axis that moves from left to right and shows how conditions change in terms of levels of liveliness. Timing diagrams are, as you might expect, useful for understanding timing constraints. Awesome! We've gone through all 14 UML diagram types. Three types of UML diagrams are used the most. Class diagrams, sequence diagrams, and use case diagrams. Okay, you can make amazing class and sequence diagrams with Gleek, so what are you waiting for? Go to www.gleek.io and start diagramming.